Do you know ancient Egyptians did not measure the things using centimeter and meters? So how exactly they built an amazing pyramid so accurately? Then which tool and units did they really use for takeoff purpose? Interesting, right? And do you know before the modern era, the beautiful London city was not as it looks today. Even London city was born to ground before the World War I. How it was born and who planned the new London city? My name is Sadi Chohan and I am an AEC consultant and I will be your presenter for this amazing series of QS. We will learn all about quantity surveying here. So let's dive in. Back in ancient times, Egyptians did not measure the things using meter, centimeter, feet, or inches. Rather, they have used the span, cupid, and fingers. Then what are these units measurement by the way? A cubit is the measurement from the tip of your longest finger to the bottom of your elbow. And a palm is the distance across your palm. And a finger is the width of your finger. And here, this is the limestone fragment of an ancient Egyptian cubit in the shape of five-edged ruler. It was probably a royal award to an architect or engineer. Put simple, it was maybe used as a ruler or a quantity swing tool in ancient times. And the craftsman who helped to measure and build the amazing pyramids and the temple of ancient time, they were called as measurer of royal rocks. Moving forward, when was the quantity surveying profession was actually introduced? It happened after the Great Fire of London. In 1666, a devastating fire swept through the London, destroying more than 13,000 houses, 87 community churches, the Royal Exchange and the Guild Hall. The fire swept through from the central part of London from 6 September to 10th in 1666 and the estimated loss was around 10 million pounds. This is the picture of central London in 1666 and the bond area are highlighted in a pink color. In that hour of need, Sir Christopher who was an architect that time, he planned the new London city and the rebuilding of London took over 30 years. But during the reconstruction of London, there was a massive need of labor. This led to decision to start paying each craftsman an amount equivalent to the quantity of work done. This requirement meant there was a need to calculate exact quantity of the work done. Thus, the profession gained a lot of momentum and got the consultant status. However, modern QS companies can trace its root to the form of Henry Cooper and the Son of Reading that was established as early as 1785. But the major term, custom surveyor or surveyor, were used long before 1859 when the name quantity surveying was firstly recorded. Today, quantity surveyors are constantly involving into many roles of industries and they are known by various names such as quantity surveyors, estimators, uh, QS engineer, etc. etc. Let's have a quick look of quantity surveying revolution. Early in 100 BC, QS used to call as measurer of royal rocks. Then from 100 BC to 680, actually, I'm not sure of that. Uh, so I'm not gonna mention here, but from 680 to 1500, QS used to call as Mayra. From 1600 to 1800, Custom Surveyor, then Quantity Surveyor, and nowadays it's a QS Engineer, Cost Engineer, Estimator, Construction Economist, Contract Manager, Technical Manager, or Commercial Manager, etc. What is Quantity Surveying? That's our topic today. Quantity surveying is an art and science of calculating material and cost for all AEC domain. I think it's only one profession that blends all discipline like engineering, construction, economics, law, accounting into one vocation. 
quantity implies amounts, number and measure. Surveyor, inspector, examiner and evaluator. Then who is quantity surveyor? A quantity surveyor is a construction professional whose job is to work out on how much machinery, material, labor and project time is required. Also, measure the value of construction investment from concept to completion. I will say the quantity surveyor is a part architect, part engineer, part general contractor, part lahir, part accountant and a cost consultant who know all the trades. Let me play a short story here to demonstrate what I really mean. Mr. C, who is a client, wants to build his home. Traditionally, the first person he would call is an architect, Mr. A, who will come and collect all his requirements and represent them in an architectural drawing. On seeing the architect's masterpiece, Mr. C is pleased and excited to have such a beautiful home. However, he told the architect, I have only one million dirham. Will it be enough to build my home? This is where Mr. QS, who is a quantity surveyor, role would begin. By applying his estimation skill, he would cost the drawing on paper. Let's assume project cost arrived at 1.4 million dirhams, which is more than as expected. Now, this cost made the client sad because he does not want to lose this beautiful home just because he cannot afford now. Then in a dramatic turn of events, the architect and the quantity surveyor both go back to the drawing board in an aim to bring that home within Mr. C's budget without necessarily removing or reducing the beauty and stability of the home. That is how QS plays an amazing role to keep every client happy. Now let's talk about roles of quantity surveyors. First is measurement and quantity takeoff according to the drawing. Second is costing for different material needed for the project. Documentation, preparation of tender documents, contracts, budgets, bill of quantity surveying, etc. Track changes to the design and construction work and adjust budget projection accordingly. Procure, settle the services of contractors and subcontractors who work on the construction of the project. Payments for subcontractors, coordination with the client and other construction professionals such as site engineer and the project managers. Construction material, select and outsource it. Leasing with clients to identify their needs. Identifying the commercial risk, assigning work to subcontractors, budgeting, managing budget, value completed work, and overseeing the payments, quality standards, ensuring project meet legal and quality standards, client needs, ensuring that clients get value for their money, maintenance cost, advising on the maintenance of buildings. Reporting, submitting regular budget reports, feasibility study to ensure proposal will work, negotiates the contract and work schedule, value management and cost control during construction, advice on contractual claim and dispute, monitoring subcontractors and stages of construction, up to date with construction method and material, etc. etc. Now you know why most of the quantity surveyors wear spec glasses like me. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. To learn the whole quantity surveying course, please follow the series of video. Learn to make a difference.